today we tutorial on my add-on called MechaFace. MechaFace is a Blender add-on made for LIGO 3D animations from MechaBricks. And it also can work on anything else. So basically it's a 2D rig that wraps around any 3D object to make it look like it has a animated texture and it can be easily manipulated. MechaFace is also able to achieve what the LEGO movie did with many very, very crazy faces such as this one right here. So it really shows the power of MechaFace. And also they can be interpolated. So it's just like your ordinary 3D rig, but for a 2D face. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to get it and use it and fix any problems you have. And if you like it, make sure to subscribe. And also, if you want a tutorial on how I lip sync or do the facial animation, just let me know. Enjoy. We'll be starting off with the basics and the first few problems people usually have. And then we'll go more into detail. So the first thing you want to do is obviously get it from the Megabrick store. And you can locate it at the shop, which you might have already known and might have already gotten it. So basically you click on it and you add to cart and you proceed to check out. You have to go to your user profile here and to your purchases. Then you can find the download button. So you click this right here. So once you download it, right click on it and extract files. Basically this will do is create a folder and inside of it, you should find mechaface.zip and the documentation. And then inside documentation, you have some basic tutorials on like how to install it and what certain things do. So your first step is to open Blender, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and click Install. Now locate the folder and double click on the zip inside of there. So double click on that and click Install Add-on. And now you should see it here and just click on this little checkbox and you should have MechaFace. It should pop up on your sidebar. All right, now we're going to be showing you how to add it to a Lego minifigure and also how to add it to multiple Lego minifigures. So very quickly, we're going to go to Megabricks and we're going to make some figures. OK, so once you got your minifigures ready, make sure you have the Megabricks Advanced add-on or the Megabricks Lite add-on for Blender and export as a ZMBX and go to Blender. You can delete everything and go File, Import, Mechabricks, Downloads, at least that's where mine's located, and boom, there's our figures. So now that we have our figures, we're gonna add Mechaface to the first guy here, and all you gotta do is select the minifigure's head, add face rig to selected, and there we go, we have it. It's a very nice basic minifigure face, and yeah, so that's the first basic thing. And now the most common problem people have is with adding it to another character. So if I tried to add it to this guy now, it would cause an error. Now, my way I coded this was very badly. So that's why I'm going to be recoding my face soon. What you have to do here is just open the final tab and click finish. Now you're able to add my face to this rig over here. There you go. Now we have two mecha faces. Also, finally, if you're lagging or it's laggy, if you have a big scene, many characters, go to this camera, go to simplify, check the box, open it. And make the viewport max out division to zero if you're just animating the character. If you're doing faces, either one or two. One works fine, two is nicer. And then when it renders, make sure it stays at this. Only do this in the viewport. So I'm going to be showing you how to paint out the face and keep, say, these wrinkles on the original face so that you can have my face on top. So what you got to do is go to image editor and paint. Open this up and try and find the face. So I found it right here. And now if it's a newer texture, you'd have to switch your blend to erase alpha. And you know it's a newer texture if the background's transparent apart from the print. But here it is not. So what you got to do is select the yellow and go to fall off and switch it to constant. And now we can erase the minifigure facial stuff. And there we go. I'm going to keep this one eyebrow here so I can use it for reference. Now you can save the images in here by clicking Alt S. It should now be saved in there. Great. Now what you can do is say you want to change the eyebrow color. Well, you want to change it in here. So you open the color, you got eyebrows, eyes, mouth, and extra. Also, you can enable lips or lashes and all that. 
by the way, with the lashes when you put them in, there is a little tactic I have to get them aligned. So Alt S on the little top eyelid and then do scale Y Y so it's on the local 0.5 and it should be aligned perfectly. I'm just going to do that because this character does not need eyelashes. Now you can change the color of the eyebrows to match the rest of the figure pretty simply. So you got to do is select the hair or you can go into here image texture. And you can see that right here. But when it comes to the hair, go to the materials, go to viewport display and you see that color. Control C, now select mecha face, control V and click apply. It should apply the color or you can go here, bulk the texture and then click the eyedropper tool and select that and click apply. I'm going to use this one because it's a different color. It's probably because it's an older texture. So say you want a classic minifigure, you can just copy paste that black onto the pupil. And with the mouth, you can change all those colors and the lips and all that. And you click finish and you're done messing with all the settings. I, you may be like, hey, I cannot uh, select things and move it. Well, you can either go up here and search for pose mode like that, or you can control tap. You are now in pose mode and are able to change the face. So there's a few main controls here. We have the main mouth control here, which opens the mouth. So if you go up, it opens the mouth up. If you go to the right, it makes it wider. So you can do like a little oh face like that. We're going to leave it like this. We have this control down here, which adjusts the sharp corners. Say you want to smile with sharp corners. You can do this. And now he has a sharp corner smile like this. One of the biggest rule of mech is to not do Alt G, Alt R, and Alt S, because then ends up like this. And I don't think that's what you would like. So to reset the pose, go to Pose Library. I have many, many poses here. And what you got to do here is the base. You click this button right here, and it applies the base pose. This is so that it actually does it properly. Now, this one over here messes with the outline scale. The thing is, I don't recommend messing this because I didn't really test it that much. I think it works fine if you make it thinner, but if you make it thicker, it does not. Yeah, one thing you might notice is that it moves when it opens. It's so that we can avoid it being here when it's supposed to be a singular line. Because if it was there, it overlap and break. So when you're making a pose for the face and say you're like this, you want to make it bigger. Don't do this because then it won't have an outline. Make sure to go here until that moves up and now you can do it. All right, that's the basics for the mouth. We got even more, I'm gonna show you right now. So once you open the mouth up, you have more controls such as the top main control, which, which slightly moves the two side controls for it. So you can easily make it go, ah. And we also have a bottom one of those and slightly moves the ones side as well. We also got side ones to make it smile or sad and all that so they both sides these are corner bones that control the one little corner and of course these are the little extra bones right here so you can get more special faces and now the, these gray bones are the base bones so it controls a whole object like here controls the whole mouth here controls the whole eye whole eyebrow etc so there's a big thing when posing a mouth say we want to make him do a smile or something you can rotate this so that it makes it that or also just stretch but you want to rotate properly you can scale those you can do all kinds of stuff scaling these do do stuff it changes the outline width but very quickly, I'm just going to pose this so that we can show you something I need to show so that I can show you a big thing people mess up with. So there's our final face shape that we made here. Let's add in some teeth here. I recommend changing your transform orientations to local and scale this down. So let's say he has a face like this right now. Also, when the teeth of LEGO figures connected, they usually look something like that. So you make sure the small, the bottom one's smaller. So there's one problem you could notice. That line is not the same here. Well, the way you fix it is by rotating these. 
these little extra bones and these green bones and these bones. It's just not these ones because this one's to control the corner bones. So here you see this weird thing happening. Well, you can rotate this bone and and keep rotating. So this corner, you can try to make it as constant as you'd like. It's a little too thick. And there we go. Now we got a nice even thickness for it. So that's how you can mess with that. Of course, you can move this around. So that's the basics for the mouth. You also got the tongue. And there's also a star technique. Say you want to do an L shape. You can rotate the tongue 90 degrees and scale it so that it looks curved. So this is like a little tactic I use to achieve that. That's it for the mouth. We're now going to move on to the eyes. So the eyes are pretty simple. They have a main bone that moves them. You can rotate it. A pupil, which you can move the pupil. But Lego, they don't really move it that much. The Lego movies at least limit it to like this, this, sometimes this. But don't move it that much or get it out like that. Because then it just doesn't look right. I barely move it. How do I make it? The eyelids close up. Well, if you select these two little purple things and scale it, you can change it. So basically what it's doing, it has a square boolean. They use this in the Lego movies for when they did their eyes. You can see it in some behind the scenes stuff. And basically you can rotate these, scale them, get cool facial expressions. Now if you select this one, you may be like, I want a round one, like he's happy mad, you know? Well, see it's the bottom right eyelid. I found the bottom right one, I moved it up. There you go. You now have a circle boolean and you can make it more rounded by doing this, scaling it on the Y and the X. And you know, scaling it can get different stuff. There you go, got a mattish face. You also can do it to the top one. And there we go. He's now mad. And I think that's it for the eyes. And also if you have lashes, it would be controlled with this. All right, so now that we're done with the eyes, we're gonna go on the eyebrows. We're gonna start with the basics, then more in detail, and then how to make custom shapes for the eyebrows. So let's start this off with moving the eyebrow. It's simple enough. You select the circle, the gray circle, and you can move it around. You can rotate it. So right now it looks like a normal line, but what you can do is you select the middle piece, move it up, and there you go, it's curved. But why is it so sharp? Like why is it such a sharp curve? You can rotate this to make it like a ha ha face or the other way, which is really cool. But that's not what we're looking for. We're trying to make this rounder. What you do is you select the corner pieces and you can rotate them. Rotate them outwards, which makes it more round. You also can move them. So yeah, rotate the other way. But usually you want to do is keep a uniform thickness. So if you do this, you rotate this, move this bone. Rotate that downwards and all that. So that's how you pose the eyebrow and how to use the main part of it. But now you may be like, I really want to get this custom shape of eyebrow that you can see on the actual texture. Well, it's actually pretty simple. What you got to do is go to your outliner up here at the top right. Click on this little light bulb thing. I'm not sure what it is. And click on this cursor. Now hide the UV controllers. And same thing for second one. So you find your face break that you selected to. So right now it's this one right here. And you find the brow. So here we're looking at these two eyebrows. We can click this little mouse cursor and show it's fully white. And now it's selectable. So get out of pose mode by doing control tab or going up here and switch object mode. You can now select the eyebrow. There's the first thing is that Mecha face and default the eyebrows are scaled by 0.5, as you can see on the right. So do all S when you make a custom eyebrow, or at least scale it to the size it's at. Make sure the control points are at the right size. So I'm just gonna do that. Now we're gonna select the eyebrow, click tab, and we're gonna go to the modifiers and we're gonna go to here. So we're gonna go to click this little square box with edit mode on the armature one. And same thing with the triangle. And now it's in this position. 
So what we're going to do here is now make it the same shape, align the vertices and all that. So I'm going to select all the top vertices, G, Y. They seem to be rotated, so like this, so I'm going to rotate that. You should have a default eyebrow shape. If you, if you don't, then you can just try to make it yourself and figure it out. That's what I usually do. We're lucky enough to have a nice default one here. So here I rotate it. Then the bottom here, I'm going to rotate this, scale this out a bit. And there we go. Now, that's our first basic step for getting the eyebrow shape. Next up, we're going to teach you how to get sharp corners. So what you got to do is select the edge select mode, because right now you should have been on vertex select. Click on edge select. So now say we want these two corners to be sharp like it is on the texture. Well, select the edges touching that corner. So we got this edge for this corner, this edge for both of the corners, and then this corner has this edge. Once you have those selected, click Shift E on your keyboard and type in one and click enter. And just like that, it's now sharp. You don't have to put one. You can also just move it with your mouse if you don't want to be perfectly sharp. But yeah, now it's sharp like that. And also we need one right here. So we see that corner. We select this edge, this edge, Shift E, one. Now you may be like, how do I get this? So this is how to make a more custom eyebrow shape. So what you got to do is go ahead and select the edge. So right here, you see here on it, it splits right here. So we're going to click subdivide. We're now going to select vertices and we're going to move this down to this corner and select edge, select mode, because we went back to vertex mode and select this edge and do shift one. Now the corner is sharpened there, so we're going to have to also select this one here. The thing is, why is it so weird on the shape and why is it super buggy? Well, it's because you have to go, so you have to select all of it, go to face, tri triangulate faces. It, now it will remove all n-gons and now go to face and tries the quads. Now it will bring that back. And just like that, it's fixed. But you may see, wow, it's not sharpened anymore, even though I have all edges touching the corner sharpened. Well, in this case, when there's an inner edge for the corner just shift e on that and, I, and now you don't need it on the other ones but i still need it on these two don't need it on here so now we just need it like that and there we go we got our first custom eyebrow as you can see it works pretty well we're gonna move it up here and it works just like you would hope so let me just move that back this is a pretty simple way to add to the other eyebrow so right now we have our one we were editing go to this triangle and then copy paste the name of the mesh. Select the other eyebrow and go to the mesh here and click on this button so you can search through meshes and control V. And there you go, click on that one right there. And wow, look, we have it. But it's not the right reflection, it's just facing that way. What we're gonna have to do is go ahead and click this button so it's separated. And then scale on the X, negative one. Now you see it's invisible now. <laughs> That's not good. Well, then do Alt N flip. Wow, it works now, right? But if we move this end, it moves the other one. So what you gotta do is go to the mesh here. As you can see, we gotta swap this one that says LB with LE, and this one here that says LE with LB. Then if that happens, just remove that. And we now have a fully functioning other eyebrow with the exact same shape. But here I forgot to rescale it so we're just gonna alt s and you see the scaling of the other bone is 0.73 so we're gonna apply it to this one and now they're the same and now that we have done that we go back to this texture go to paint in the image editor and just remove it and alt s there we go we now have custom eyebrows now keep in mind that the poses reset the scale of stuff. So just maybe apply it to the base pose, the 0.733 scale or whatever it's at for yours. That's all done. We got a whole fully custom face rig right here. There is another feature in MechaFace that is known as lines. This was added in a later update. And what you gotta do to add them, select the head and click add line. 
So these lines are used for wrinkles or just any shapes. A lot of times you can use them to create different shapes like glasses, but the only way you do that is you just edit the mesh just like you did to the eyebrow, but just to the line. But here we're gonna use it to create a wrinkle. So I'm just gonna open the image editor, the texture, so we can get the colors. With the line, select the armature, do control tab, because it's in a separate armature. Then you make sure you select the main gray bone and you can go and change settings. We have the color. So what you do in this, eyedropper and choose that and click apply. This is underneath most facial parts. The way this works is if you scale it, it should just move the others inwards. You cannot rotate these, it does nothing. But if you select the middle red bone, it moves it like this and you can rotate it just like so. So if we bring it over here, and rotate it right here. We can scale it, move this red piece here, this one here. We can scale these down to match the original one had, I think here. And scale that. Now we matched it, we can go to paint and erase it. Let's say you only want to see that wrinkle when you move that mouth up. So very quickly, randomly make a face, go to keying, set it to location, rotation, scale, click on this button, it auto keys, and we're just going to very quickly animate it. So say we want a this pose. There we go. And it automatically keyframes it. Now to keyframe the visibility of the wrinkle. So we're going to make it come in here. Go to set visibility is right now, so we're frame 10. So from here, it will start on this frame, click on this, click set, and there we go. Now also, you can make it visible again later on. So set, and now it would be visible for over two frames there. But yeah, at the end, if it's one, then it would set for this frame, and one more frame. If you set two, it's set for three visible frames and all that. You also can animate these when it becomes visible, so it smoothly comes in. Also, if you want to set a pose, select everything. So I selected everything here. Click this plus, add a new, and you name it. So we say menacing, which are probably written wrong there. Base. Y'all, and there we go. You also can create new pose libraries by clicking this. Say you have the epic fig rig add-on produced by Blender Bricks or the Mecha Fig Rig. Alright, so what you gotta do is when you add it, just select the head. Don't select the bone. Just select the head, because the head's parented to the armature, so it will follow and it will be fine. Anyways, this tutorial might become outdated very soon because around the release of Blender 3.0, I will be working on a new Mecha Face complete remake. So I'm going to remake Mecha Face and make it really simple to use with only a few controls, but also the ability to tweak teeny little parts of the face and a whole bunch more and also make the add-on much better and and ways more similar to mecha fig but yeah when appending it to other scenes just make sure to hide uv controllers and make sure the render here disable renders that the uv controllers is disabled also you do have the ability to make face to other things so for example we're gonna add to this torso just like the hat hits on the torso you also can scale it up I don't know if it works perfectly, but it does. You can move it down. There you go. It's a. Uh, it's probably something you see in a horror film. Kind of scary. Anyways, that's the end of this tutorial. Get Mecha Face from the Mecha Rick store. Make sure to subscribe if you want more content like this. Please suggest any other tutorials you would like in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you to all my Patreons and my MVP Patreons. FPV Dan and Planet.